Hey, hey, people, it's Wall here with Wallcraft, and today we're going to be taking a look at the Warrior class. Uh, this has been a much requested video. Uh, previously, I had a deep dive video for Warriors uh, a very long time ago, but unfortunately, my channel did take a, uh, a nuke in, so I'm trying to remake some of the old content, some of the uh, deep dive videos, especially regarding the classes. Uh, I believe I have a Shaman one up currently on the channel, but we're going to go through every single class and talk about all the changes, all the new abilities, all the refinements and tuning that have been done, and just kind of give a little bit of a discussion regarding all, all of the facets of the classes on Wallcraft. So uh, as you can see today, we're just standing in the basement of Karazhan Subtower. This is the Alpha Karazhan. And we're just going to go through some of the talents, some of the changes, and give a little bit of a gameplay demonstration. So without further ado, let's pop open the talent tree and we're going to reset talents first off so we can better get a grasp of everything. Uh, Warrior is pretty standard in most regards. The gameplay of Warrior within Vanilla WoW is very, very good to begin with, but most people just focus on the DPS aspects and of course the PvP uh, damage that they're able to output. There's a lot of downsides and a lot of flaws though in regards to warrior now every class has its weakness but warriors in particular their weakness uh, primarily is gear and the way that they scale with gear it's not really so much as a weakness but double-edged sword uh, at a certain point they are terrible because they don't have the gear yet but once they get all the gear once they have all the best stuff they become the best class at that point uh, in Wallcraft, that isn't necessarily different, but it's smoothed out a little bit between the process. Um, this is primarily because uh, something I'd first like to talk about is the way that attack power scales from gear. In Wallcraft, each of the five physical DPS classes, be it Warrior, Paladin, Shaman, Hunter, Rogue, and of course as well Druid's Feral forms, each gain attack power from a unique spread of three different stats, with Warriors being... Uh, attack power gained from stamina, strength, and spirit. Uh, you can see that in my previous set, my spirit is kind of low, so my natural out-of-combat health regeneration would be a bit low. But the way that the uh, stats work, each stat has priority over the other. Uh, essentially, for each point of stamina that I have, I'll gain 1 attack power. For each point of strength I have, I'll gain 0.75 attack power. And for each point of spirit I have, I'll gain 0.5 attack power. So there's definitely a stat priority, with Warrior's stat priority being Stamina, uh, Strength being secondary, and Spirit being the tertiary stat that they have. Um, so for the previous gear, you can see I have 841 attack power, which is slightly above average, maybe about average in regards to what you'd have uh, in vanilla. This is an ARMS PvP loadout as well, so you, you'll see that I don't have like Mask of the Unforgiven or True Strike Spalders. This is a uh, ARMS build. For PvP primarily. Uh, it does have the Devil Sword Gauntlets, the Omox Girth Restrainer, a uh, four-piece Valor set for that 40 attack power bonus along with the armor, um, some crit, some hit. Uh, I'm currently using Black Blade of Sharam, but I'm actually going to put on a different weapon just for the trials um, so we can take a look at everything here. Uh, we're going to put on the Ar Arcanite Reaper. Uh, it does have more attack power, of course, with the Arcanite Reaper providing 62, whereas Sharam doesn't have any stats. Um, the biggest thing that you'll notice is the talent trees on Wallcraft, and this goes for all classes. Each talent tree is equalized in terms of points. Each talent tree has precisely 51 points that are able to be allocated within the trees. Um, in vanilla, some specs had under 45, some specs had almost 60, I believe actually arms had almost 60. So there was definitely a discrepancy between the different talent trees within Vanilla that has been addressed in Wallcraft uh, to make them a, a lot more balanced between the different specs. So you'll see uh, ARMS has pretty commonly the same talents, but many improvements that are very subtly hidden with all of them. We're going to go down the list and we're going to talk about each talent individually. We're going to go through all three specs and then we're going to do a little bit of uh, trials with different gear setups and different talent trees uh, against uh, a few different uh, dummy mobs here. You can see I've got a Zanzel zombie. Actually, level him up real quick and give him 10,000 health for the test. Um, so starting off, Fearlessness. This is the original, you know, charge talent that you're familiar with. However, uh, 
The charge talent, the improved charge here for fearlessness, actually increases the range of your charge, so you can actually uh, hit 35 yard range on your charge. This is a very big blessing for warriors, um, especially because distance in combat for your charge is often a limiting factor on who gets the opener, and if somebody else gets the opener and puts you in combat, you can no longer use charge, as it's not usable in combat, so having that extra... 10 yards total for 35 yard range will allow you to outrange most opponents uh, for the opener and that's definitely a huge deal in addition of course it gives the 10 extra rage so you get 25 rage upon casting charge and this combos very nicely with tactical mastery which allows you to charge and then swap stances and you'll still ha have the full 25 rage uh, within your defensive or your berserker stance <coughs> Uh, you have deflections, the standard 5% parry bonus. This is very good tanking talent, very good for arms as well, in a situation where you're going to be getting hit yourself. Parry on wallcraft is rolled first on the combat table, uh, where traditionally in vanilla you'll have dodge, block, parry. In wallcraft you'll have the parry chance rolled first, so it's parry, dodge, block. This makes parry much more viable and valuable as a stat, because... Uh, you cannot push it off the uh, avoidance table with block. Uh, traditionally, if you had shield block up, you would block 75% um, of the time, plus your other avoidance stats from defense and you know the base stats that you have. Um, essentially, with shield block up, you couldn't really parry because block would supersede it within the order, and you would just have so much block chance that it would push parry right off the table. Uh, parry being first gives it a lot more viability. A uh, lot more value as a stat overall. Uh, moving on to the next talent, we have Severed Vein. This is your traditional improved rend ability. However, on Wallcraft, it not only increases... Uh, it, it increases the duration and the bleed damage done in total by rend. Uh, rend, you'll notice, is a pretty powerful spell in terms of Wallcraft because it is modified by your total attack power. Instead of just doing flat damage, your rend will actually be modified by your attack power. So it starts off with 210 flat damage at max level, uh, but it's, again, modified by attack power, so you'll notice the tick is a lot higher. And, in fact, we'll go ahead and take the improved Ren talent. You'll see that it has now a 30 second duration instead of uh, 20 or 21. And you can see for Priebus gear, it's actually ticking for 41 damage, whereas normally, you can reset talents here, normally you'd see it uh, tick for a lot less in that regard. Let's get that popped back up on him. So 31. So you're seeing, you know, a very, very significant increase on that. Uh, about 30%, of course. And that's 30% total overall, not just base damage. <coughs> so the improved Rend Talent is definitely viable and definitely very valuable. Uh, a lot of people underestimate Rend, but if you consider it one single Rend, it's going to tick uh, 10 total times with the max rank. And it's going to essentially deal 410 damage for a very low rage cost, only 10 rage. Um, that's actually more damage than a mortal strike would be doing. And costing half the amount of rage. Uh, Two-handed weapon specialization, of course this is the traditional. But instead of 5%, it's 10% in total. So when it's maxed, you'll be receiving 10% total damage bonus with two-handed weapons. Uh, it's very strong, of course. It's a, a very good talent to begin with. Uh, moving on, Tactical Mastery. This is unchanged. It's a staple talent. It's a very strong talent, um, so not really much of a need for it to change. Uh, didn't want to degrade the value of it at all. Uh, seismic Stomp, the Improved Thunderclap. The Improved Thunderclap is a very, very good talent, and this is mostly due to Thunderclap being usable in both battle and defensive stance. It deals nature damage instead of physical on Wallcraft, so it cuts right through the armor. And, as well, it has no target cap. So, traditionally, Thunderclap could only hit four targets at a time. On Wallcraft, it hits all targets. This makes it a staple tanking ability, especially due to it being usable in defensive stance now. And the talent reduces the rage cost down from 20 to 10. So, just having that improved Thunderclap is a huge buff to tanking. Uh, AoE tanking, especially, for a warrior. Uh, Thunderclap will be the staple AoE threat generator talent, along with your Demoralizing Shout. We're just going to uh, put our points into the parry here, because we're going to end up maxing out this tree. Uh, Man of War, this is the improved overpower. It's a very good talent. Uh, 
two points will increase the critical strike chance of your overpower by 50%, uh, thereby guaranteeing you to, well, I can't say guarantee, but thereby giving you a very good chance of landing a critical strike on overpower. Uh, very strong ability, of course, because overpower only costs five rage, so definitely something that you'll be using any time that an enemy dodge blocks or uh, parries. I'm sorry, just dodges or parries your attack. Uh, overpower, of course, cannot be dodge blocked or parried, so it's almost a guaranteed strike, provided it doesn't miss. Uh, anger management, of course, this is a staple talent. It's unchanged. It's a very strong talent. I didn't want to nerf or buff it. I feel like it's a very good talent to begin with, so uh, wasn't in need of any modifications on that. Deep Wounds, of course, uh, this is a staple talent as well. Every time you crit, you'll deal 60% of your melee's, uh, wep melee weapon's average damage over 12 seconds. So we're just going to auto-attack this until we get a crit, and there we go. And you'll see it ticking, 75 damage per tick. Now, of course, remember, uh, Rogue's Hemorrhage amplifies all bleed damage by 10%, so this is very good for a warrior in combination, because a warrior does a pretty fair amount of bleed damage between Rend and Deep Wounds. Uh, Impale, of course, this is a 20% crit bonus on all of your abilities. Um, this is just a necessary talent, essentially, for DPS. 20% higher crit damage is very big, uh, so that's unchanged. Uh, Onslaught, this is your improved Heroic Strike ability. Onslaught, of course, does a reduction for your Rage Cost on Heroic Strike. Uh, typically, it maxes out at 3-point reduction, but on Wallcraft, it actually goes 1, 3, and then 5 for a 5-point reduction on Heroic Strike, bringing it down to 10 Rage Cost. This is a very big talent, because Heroic Strike, as you'll know, is one of your main DPS abilities, especially as either Arms or a dual wield Fury. You'll probably be picking up this talent all the way down to the Arms Tree, and this is where you'll allocate your extra points after putting a 31 or 33 inside Fury. Uh, Skirmisher, this is your improved Polearm skill. Uh, this increases your skill with Polearms by up to 10. So this gives you 10 weapon skill with pole arms, and it increases your critical strike chance with pole arms by 10% at max. Uh, this is a very good talent, and the reason why this is a very good talent, especially, is because uh, it's in the fourth tier. So as you know, if you're going to be investing all the way down into the last talent of a different tree, you'll still be able to reach this. This gives you a viable option for a two-hander using either a protection or a fury spec if you prefer to go that route. Um, it definitely adds a nice bit of uh, weapons into the mix that you're able to use with the different specs. Uh, do note that all the weapon skill talents and arms only affect two-handed weapons, not one-handed, so you'll never be foregoing uh, fury talents or anything like that for the weapon skills. Um, Skirmisher, though, definitely gives you a viable option uh, for two-handed and the other, other talents. Uh, moving on to the base one, Battlemaster. Uh, Mace's are generally the same, increases your skill by 10, and also gives you a 10% chance to stun your target for 3 seconds when wielding a two-handed mace. This is primarily seen as a PvP talent. Uh, the weapon skill is very nice, it makes it viable in PvE, and especially in dungeons too, that 3 second stun on enemies in dungeons that are susceptible to stun is very strong. But let's say you have a Might of Menethil and you're doing PvE with the Might of Menethil, even in a raid environment where the enemy is immune to stun, uh, normally, some, some exceptions obviously occur in raids, but um, you still get the 10 weapon skill, which definitely increases your DPS. That is more than enough to push off the uh, glancing blow reductions to a minimal, so you don't really need to worry about your racial bonuses. And of course, on Wallcraft, each race has a weapon skill. Uh, I probably have a few yeah, GM spells learned on here, but you can see that dwarfs have gun, mace, and axe specializations. So each race has three different weapon skills. They have usually a two-handed, usually a one-handed, and usually a ranged type bonus. So dwarf is guns, maces, and axes. The axes and maces applying to both two-hand and one-hand. So as you'll see with the uh, mace weapon skill on my skill tree, I have 15 for uh, two-handed maces here because of the talent. And even for one-handed, I still have the five bonus. It's very nice for it. <coughs> Now, one of the first things that you probably really stick out to you is Mortal Strike. Mortal Strike is no longer the last talent. It's actually been moved up two rows, so it's obtainable at level 30. 
the ranks for Mortal Strike have been adjusted around this, and this gives you much more viability for leveling. Um, it's always kind of a, a grind to get to 40 for your main damage ability, uh, especially as Arms or Fury. So Bloodthirst and Mortal Strike are both at the uh, fifth tier of the talent tree, and they're obtainable at level 30. And this gives you a lot better options when doing any type of DPS uh, while leveling. Uh, moving on to Barbarian. This is a uh, personal favorite of mine. Barbarian increases your skill with two-handed axes by up to 10, and it causes 10% cleave damage to all enemies in front of you while wielding a two-handed axe. This is probably the premier uh, weapon that you'll be using in a PvE raid environment, and that's simply because the cleave is very good. It's a lot of damage, so we're going to summon a few dummies here so we can take a look at it. You can see all of the smaller hits being applied when we deal damage, either with our auto attacks or our abilities. Uh, direct damage abilities, of course, even a heroic strike. You'll see the 10% damage that's being distributed onto the surrounding targets. It's uh, very good for dealing a little bit of AoE damage, but especially once you start using your slam, which you'll notice slam is now an arms talent. It's been moved out of the Fury Tree, more so suited for a two-handed weapon specialization. And uh, in regards to Sweeping Strikes, which was previously in this tier, Sweeping Strikes is now a baseline ability for all warriors, so it's very strong for either tanking or DPSing. Uh, very useful in PvP as well, when you're trying to cleave down two enemies that are on you. You'll notice the slam ability on Wallcraft. Slam is very nice because it doesn't reset your attack timer, and it's usable while moving. It still has cast time, of course, so you cannot dodge, parry, or block during casting of it. So it's primarily a uh, DPS-oriented ability. You wouldn't really use it while tanking. Um, but it's usable while moving. It doesn't interrupt due to movement. <coughs> and it doesn't reset your swing timer. So you'll see I'll get the swing right after this. Uh, you can watch my attack bar, and you'll see the attack bar will reset just because the add-on that I'm using uh, does calculate slam for the new effect, which is fine. You'll just uh, take a look and you'll see as I slam, my attack will go off right away. So you see that white hit there? Uh, that makes slam a mainstay for your DPS rotation, especially because of the Skull Crusher talent. Uh, we'll talk about that after we talk about Gladiator, though. Gladiator is the 10 weapon skill for two-handed swords, and of course gives you 10% extra chance to uh, get an extra attack when dealing damage with the two-handed sword. So you'll see we'll throw on the weapon here. Grab a sword. And this is uh, a very, very strong single target uh, DPS tool that you'd be using is Gladiator. And, ooh, we got the Sharam proc. Sharam's very strong. Is that, uh... 30% increase attack speed buff. Very nice. Uh, Barbarian, of course, the two-handed axes is going to be dealing more damage in an AoE, but the two-handed swords will be dealing more damage in a single-target environment. Um, so let's talk about the Skull Crusher talent. Skull Crusher reduces the casting time of your slam ability by 30% at max, so you can reduce your slam cast time from 1.5 seconds down to 1.05 seconds. This is a um, new staple for your DPS rotation, is using Slam. You'll interweave with your other abilities, of course, but typically you'd be in Berserker Stance, you'd be using Slam with Mocking Blow. Mocking Blow is a 5 second cooldown damage ability now, it's no longer just a garbage taunt. Uh, we'll talk more about that once we get to the Fury Tree. But Slam is a mainstay of your DPS rotation as a warrior now. In a PvE and PvP environment, Slam is very powerful. It gives you that extra attack that you so desire. And, of course, it's obtainable at level 30, so once you hit level 30, you'll definitely be popping off between Slam and Moral Strike or Concussive Blow or Blood Burst. Uh, moving on to the talents, you'll notice a brand new one. This is one of my favorite ones that I've implemented so far in the Wallcraft. This is called Arsenal. And it allows the warrior to swap between weapons and stances without any cooldown. Uh, typically, when you swap between stances, you have the global cooldown. Uh, with Arsenal, there is no global cooldown. It's just instant. Same for weapons. I could swap weapons with no cooldown while in combat. This makes uh, switching weapons for PvP or PvE 
uh, stance dancing and swapping weapons very, very strong. Uh, not having that cooldown is very major in that regard. Uh, this makes ARMS a real skilled person with a variety of weapons. And swapping between the one-hander and the two-hander, uh, the sword and board to the two-hander in PvP or PvE is much, much more fluid now with the arsenal talent. Um, it's definitely, definitely a mainstay that you'll want to be taking in either PvP or PvE. Uh, and bringing us on to the final talent, of course, this was just added to the game yesterday. This is Bladestorm. This is a vanilla version of the Bladestorm ability. Uh, some of you are familiar with the Wrath of the Lich King version. This is the vanilla version. Uh, vanilla Bladestorm allows you to attack all nearby enemies for 9 seconds. During Bladestorm, you are unable to attack or move. So you see we pop it. It's got a 1 minute cooldown, 30 rage cost. It's pretty much the same as the Herod Axe ability. And as it channels, you'll be able to just hit everything around you. It's very, very strong for dealing AoE damage. And in PvP, it's very nice, because if you're getting mobbed by two or three people, uh, let's say you have two rogues jump you, you can just pop Bladestorm, and they definitely don't want to be standing next to you. They're going to be taking a lot of damage. Uh, primarily, though, it is for PvE. It's good in PvP, but you can't move and you can't cancel it, so you are a bit of a sitting duck while it's being channeled. In PvE, though, of course, on the big AoE poles, you pop Bladestorm, you're going to be topping the meters. Um, no doubt there. It's one of the stronger AoE abilities. I wouldn't say it's the strongest form of AoE damage in the game, but combined with the Barbarian Axe specialization and Bladestorm, you're definitely going to be pumping some really good numbers, because your weapons do proc, of course. Let's fight the zombie here. I don't have my bars set up, though. I know we're clicking right now like a scrub. Uh, don't really have any of my bars set up at the moment, but that's fine. I'm gonna pop Blade Storm though. Yeah, that's a nice pump there. Get that overpower up. And pop out some slams. Get off the sweeping strikes. Have the execute proc happening right now. We'll get the bar set up though after and uh, do some real testing. Just pulled this guy inadvertently. Alright, back onto the talent trees here. That wraps it up for arms. You can see 51 points exactly in all talent trees. Uh, some very, very strong abilities, of course, have been included in Wallcraft, and it offers a lot better viability for two handed DPS and PvE for a warrior, which was something that was very lacking in vanilla. You did have the shaman-warrior combo with the Wind Fury for two-handed slam spec in PvE, but it was never better than the two, uh, the dual-wield Fury Warrior. Uh, slam spec was never really considered very viable unless you were Horde, getting a benefit from Wind Fury. And even then, it was, it was okay, but it wasn't great. Um, in Wallcraft, it's pretty much on par with the dual wield. I would say it's marginally worse. You're probably going to be dealing about 90% of the damage of dual wield. Where it does shine, though, of course, is AoE. If you have cleave or if you have AoE, the two-handed is definitely going to topple the, the dual wield. If it's single target, the dual wield will be on top. But that's uh, essentially how I designed it. I wanted the dual wield to be more so single target focused with the two-handed being a cleave and AoE focused uh, spec. So between Blade Storm, Barbarian, and of course the improved cleave talent that we can get with the Fury Tree, which we'll discuss, uh, you're a master of cleaving down three mobs at once. And, uh, you know, three to four mobs, that's really the sweet spot for a two-handed arms warrior in a PvE scenario. That's really where you start pumping out the damage and topping the meters. Um, really nothing, ke nothing will keep up with that in terms of a cleave scenario. Uh, there's a few classes and specs that do a lot of AoE damage, but the 2-3 to three to 4 mob cleave scenario is really where this takes off. Uh, so moving on though, we're going to talk about the Fury Talent Tree next, and we're going to discuss a little bit of the design philosophy and some of the changes here. Then we'll uh, talk about Prot after. I just want to get my bars set up a little bit better because I wasn't really uh, 
prepared for any of this. Uh, going into the Fury Tree, of course, we're going to talk about the first talent, Booming Voice. This increases the area of effect of your shouts up to 50%, so this gives a very much needed bonus to your shout area of effect, but it also reduces the rage cost by 5. This applies to all your shouts. Um, piercing Howl has been renamed to Piercing Shout, and it's now a shout within the categorization, so this does also get affected. And with the 5 out of 5 talent, it reduces the rage cost down to 5. It's very, very nice to have. Uh, you can see Battle Shout, Demoralizing Shout, Challenging Shout, Intimidating Shout, and especially Challenging Shout too, with the talent, has no rage cost whatsoever. That makes it a lot easier to use if you are just starting out a fight, you don't have any of the Blood Rage uh, rage pooled. Uh, shouts being, of course, in Fury Tree, so you'll see like Intimidating Shout. The 5 reduction and the AoE increase is very, very huge. Uh, the radius is very nice. Uh, moving on to the next talent, Cruelty. Cruelty increases, of course, your chance to get a critical strike with melee weapons by up to 5%. This is a staple talent. The 5% crit is very, very strong on a warrior, especially a class that's reliant on dealing critical strikes to generate more rage. So, unchanged, but very good overall. Uh, Supreme Shouts now in, uh, impact both of your Demoralizing and Battle Shouts. There's not two different talents for your Shouts. They're just one. They're consolidated down into one. Uh, increases the melee attack power reduction of your Demoralizing Shout and the increase by Battle Shout up to 25% at max rank. So it's much more convenient to go ahead and take this talent in a PvE scenario or even PvP. Uh, since the two are consolidated down into one, you can save yourself essentially five points there. Ah. I'm going to take a sip of the Red Bull. Unbridled Wrath, moving on to the next talent, gives you a 50% chance to generate an additional rage point when you deal melee damage with the weapon. This is very strong for dual wielding, because you're going to be attacking very quickly for the most part, so... Let's uh, give myself a Mira Song. Actually, we would want to use a Flurry Axe, because Dwarf has Mace and Axe specialization, so Flurry Axe with Iron Foe. Amazing combination. You have the bonus 5 weapon skill for both axes and maces as a dwarf. And of course each race has 3 different weapon skills, but this would be the ideal loadout for a dwarf fury warrior. Uh, let's swap over to the berserker stance, and we're just gonna smack the dummies a little bit as we AFK and talk about the talents. Uh, Unbridled Wrath, of course, generates a lot more rage. You'll see uh, one rage on chance there. Enrage increases your melee damage bonus by up to 30%, or I'm sorry, 25% uh, for up to 12 seconds, uh, or a maximum of 12 swings after being the victim of a critical strike. This is a very strong PvP talent, more so PvP-oriented. Uh, if you're tanking in PvE and you're being crit, uh, because you're not defense bonus capped. Uh, it's not something that you want to do on wallcraft because mobs, especially raid trash and bosses, hit much harder. Uh, and critical strike against you is almost certainly going to be a death. But um, in PvP especially, you're going to be getting crit a lot by other people. So this helps you sustain your damage output a lot, a lot higher. I would definitely recommend taking this talent for a PvP build. And because it's so high up in the tree here, you can easily access it from any of the other specs there. Uh, moving on to the next, Challenger, two-point talent, reduces the cooldown of your Intimidating Shout by up to 30 seconds at max rank, and also increases the number of targets affected by 10. So this can give you up to 15 in total targets affected by Intimidating Shout. Uh, it's a very strong talent if you are trying to do any PvP especially. But even in PvE, I would definitely take this one or consider taking this one because you're never going to have a situation where you're just simply too outnumbered for Intimidating Shout to be uh, viable. I can imagine a lot of situations in places like UBRS or you know BRD even. Uh, but in PvP, it really shines because the 30-second cooldown reduction and having up to 15 targets affected, running into a 40-man raid, you throw up Intimidating Shout and you feared half the raid, basically. 
Uh, the 30 second cooldown reduction though is the biggest part, obviously. <coughs> uh, piercing Howl, of course, like I said, has been renamed to Piercing Shout because it's now categorized as a shout, so it receives the bonus from Booming Voice. Uh, increases, or I'm sorry, decreases the movement speed of all enemies within the radius by 50% for up to 15 seconds. This is even stronger, essentially, than your uh, typical hamstring ability. I'm going to put hamstring up on our bars here. Uh, this is stronger, essentially, than your hamstring ability because it affects an AoE and even costs less rage when you have the booming voice talent. Uh, and the duration, of course. The duration is really nice. You know, 15 seconds. Same as hamstring, but 15 seconds of so slow and very strong. Uh, flurry. Uh, unchanged. It's a staple talent. 30% melee speed increase for your next three swings after dealing a melee critical strike. This is a key talent for DPS on a warrior, be it two-handed, one-handed, or even a protection warrior. Uh, having a 30% attack speed increase. All physical classes now have a 30% attack speed increase through talents or abilities. Uh, so warrior is obviously no exception to that. Uh, this has always been a staple for them, and it's definitely something you'll, you'll be wanting to use. Uh, moving on to the next one. This is one of their stronger talents. Um, for PvP especially, but even in PvE, it provides you insane amounts of mobility. This is Endless Conquest, and with three points in total, we can remove the cooldown of our Intercept. Uh, Intercept on Wallcraft has been reworked. It no longer applies a stun. It now has a 100% rage on use consumption, so you'll see my 100 rage completely drained when I use it. So it's not something you're going to want to be just spamming out willy-nilly if you're trying to pool up rage. But... On Wallcraft, with the talents, it has no cooldown, so you have extreme mobility as a warrior, especially in PvP scenarios. And when you use Intercept, it removes all movement impairing effects and roots from you. So if I were rooted, we can show it right now. Uh, entangling roots. Uh, aura ourselves with Entangling roots. And if we were rooted, we could just Intercept right out of it. And additionally... For 3 seconds after using Intercept, we get a 50% movement speed bonus. This makes us very, very fast and able to keep up with enemies. Uh, you're not going to have a situation where you charge in and somebody's running away, and by the time that you get there, they're already gone. You just catch up right, right away to them with the movement speed bonus. The removal, though, of roots and slows upon using Intercept is huge. And additionally, the way that charges have been optimized... Your charge and your intercept no longer will be slow. So if you're slow while using it, you'll no longer run slowly to the target. You just have full speed upon using it. Uh, there's no slow charging in Wallcraft. Uh, makes for much more fluid, fluid gameplay in PvE and PvP. Uh, moving on to the next one, Decapitate reduces the rage cost uh, by 5 for Execute at max rank. Uh, this is very big because reducing your rage cost of your execute allows you to essentially, of course, do a lot more executes. And reducing it down to 10 rage means that we're going to set his HP to 100,000 and we're going to damage him for 90,000. You can see that we have the fast attack speed. Unfortunately, we're getting some misses and dodges. It's blood rage, though. And having a 10 rage execute course very strong because we're able to uh, essentially spam it out on the enemy. Uh, this set doesn't optimize for hit bonus so you can see I'm getting a lot of misses right now dual wielding. I'll use the carry set for the test though which has a lot more hit rating. This is some of the best damage in the game though is just being able to spam out execute during the kill phase and for only 10 rage especially with higher tiers of gear and more hit bonus you will be using execute essentially on global cooldown at that point. Uh, moving on to the next one, this is one of my one of my personal favorites for Warrior. It's called Carnage. This increases the number of targets affected by your cleave ability up to one single point talent. And something to note is that each talent tree, each uh, spec in Wallcraft, of course, not only has 51 points exactly. Each spec has uh, four single point talents, and they're considered your most powerful talents for the most part. Uh, so, of course, Fury Warrior, you have the Piercing Shout, Carnage. Bloodthirst, and then Deathwish, which we'll talk about these later. But Carnage increases the number of targets hit by your cleave by one. So you can cleave three targets instead of just two. Uh, 
at a time. It's very, very nice because this helps keep up uh, competitively with Eve uh, fights. Now, Warrior, I didn't want to generally increase their damage overall because they were, you know, top dogs. I'd still like them to be top dogs um, without doing anything artificial. But the improved cleave was just too good to pass up. The old improved cleave was always pretty mediocre, just increased the base damage of your cleave. Uh, giving it one extra target is definitely much appreciated for warriors. Uh, moving on to the next, of course, like I said, Bloodthirst, Mortal Strike, Concussive Blow, they're the level 30 damage talent, so you essentially get it five le or 10 levels earlier, and this will help you do a lot more as a warrior. Uh, getting this at level 30 is very nice. Of course, Bloodthirst, uh, generally the same, increases your... or deals damage based on your attack power, so 45 attack power, and restores health for the next uh, four hits there. Or, I'm sorry, five melee attacks will restore a uh, set amount of health. This is just the rank one. Uh, the max rank, of course, restores 20 health per hit, but I am considering changing this to restore percentage on hit. Uh, that would overlap, though, with Blood Craze, which is the next talent. Uh, traditionally, this was the talent where if you were crit, you would restore health. Well, with Blood Craze on Wallcraft, every time you deal a critical strike to an enemy, you'll regenerate 1% of your total health. So if you see mod my crit to 100 will deal 5,000 damage to me and I'm just going to smack this target here. You watch my health just chugging on up. Especially if I'm scanning out some abilities like Whirlwind or Cleave. Each hit with Cleave will restore a nice amount of health. So this helps give warriors, Fury Warriors, a lot more self-sustain within a raid environment. It counteracts a lot of the AoE damage that they're taking. and uh, it helps keep you alive during the raid environment. Uh, PvP, it's also very nice too, especially if you're doing a dual wield PvP spec, which is pretty viable on Wallcraft. But uh, primarily for PvE, self sustain. It's very good while leveling, especially too, if you're uh, going for the Fury builds. You could even do a two handed Fury build with the Bloodthirst and Blood uh, blood Craze, but obviously two weapons would benefit a lot more than one. Uh, moving on to the next one Rampage. This causes your Berserker Rage ability to generate 20 rage when it's used. This is a very nice talent for really any situation because it gives you a blood rage that doesn't put you in combat. And it's 30 second cooldown as opposed to the 1 minute cooldown from blood rage that costs health and puts you in combat. Uh, just 20 rage instantly. Very, very nice for that extra pump on that. Uh, moving on to the next one, Clash of Steel. This is your dual wield talent. Increases the damage dealt by your offhand weapon by 25%. This is a very big talent because having this will allow you to generate more rage with your offhand weapon attacks, but this in addition causes your successful melee attacks to reduce the cooldown of your recklessness by one second for each attack that hits the target. So if I were to pop recklessness and then fight, uh, let's say I were to pop recklessness and then fight a dummy for 15 minutes, it would have reset the whole cooldown essentially by that time for my recklessness. Um, you're gonna, you can basically consider this with maximum efficiency. You're going to remove half of the cooldown time on your recklessness. This is just a nice little added bonus to it, but helps you uh, basically have you know, uh, about one-third more uptime on your recklessness in a PvE environment. This means using it... Th this definitely means the difference between using it once and using it twice in a raid. Uh, most raids might only last... You know, uh, especially like uh, something that you're speed running, most raids might only last up to an hour, so you might even be able to get like three uses out of it, uh, traditionally, if you were to pop it right away, and then another time, and then another time. Um, in Wallcraft, though, you'll, you'll be using Recklessness probably maybe four times even in full raid, so, and, and that's a fast run. Uh, molten Core, let's say Molten Core lasts an hour and a half, just on average. Uh, you'll definitely have a lot more uses out of Recklessness for more boss fights, essentially. Uh, moving on, the last talent, uh, Fury, uh, relatively unchanged, it's Deathwish. Uh, these two essentially got swapped and managed to make Fury a little bit more viable in terms of leveling or early game usage. Uh, it doesn't really matter which, if Deathwish was 30 or 40, but I did not want other specs to be foregoing their talents to essentially get Deathwish for DPS. Uh, I wanted them to be able to uh, enjoy their final talents without feeling like they were missing out by having Deathwish so close. So, swapping it to the last tier just ensured that you were more likely to take the other talents um, instead of forsaking them for Deathwish. 
Uh, but yeah, it increases your physical damage by 20% and makes you immune to fear effects, but also lowers your armor and resistances by 20%. That's something definitely to be careful of because in Wallcraft resistance is much more valuable. Uh, negative resistance is a thing, so if I were to pop Deathwish, uh, I'd have to be very careful with my resistances. You know, I still have a little bit, but I'm having my resistance bonus reduced. Uh, if I'm tanking anything or if I'm DPSing a boss that does fire damage or AoE elemental damage, definitely would want to be careful when using this uh, because it could lead to my death. Uh, moving on to the protection tree, we're going to talk about protection for a little bit, so we're going to throw on a shield and take a look at some of the talents. Um, afterwards, we're going to go through the spell books. I should probably go through the spell books as I'm talking about the talents, but we're just going to go through the spell books at the end to see if there's any differences and changes. And we're going to go into protection, though. Uh, first up on the list for protection, shield specialization. This increases your chance to block an attack with a shield by up to 5% and also gives you a 100% chance to generate 5 Rage when a block occurs. This is a very, very nice talent now because traditionally it only restored 1 Rage. It's now 5 Rage every time you block, so when in conjunction with Shield Block, you'll be gaining a lot more Rage when using a Shield than you would traditionally. Uh, Wallcraft aims to essentially fix the problem with protection, being that you didn't really benefit from a Shield. It was basically just a big chunk of armor and would reduce essentially your rage as opposed to dual wielding. Um, on Wallcraft, the generation for rage when using a shield is much higher than ev even using a dual wield weapon spec, provided that you're being attacked and you're blocking attacks. So it makes using the shield for rage generation much more of a thing. Um, but yeah, this is a very nice talent now. Uh, next one, Toughness. This increases the total armor value of items by up to 20% at max level. You can see in generally pre bis gear, if I were to let me go over to the vendor and actually grab the protection pre bis Actually, I'm not in combat. Grab the protection build and drink it there. And we'll put on Iron Foe. We'll, we'll even use the Axe of the Decoids here. Uh, you can see with the talent, I have almost 7,000 armor in Prebus. It's a very nice amount that offers plenty of protection, uh, a little over 55% damage reduction. Uh, pretty much a staple of what you'd expect it to be, but you are gaining an additional 10% increase from this talent now. Uh, moving on to the next one, Rally to Battle. This is your improved Blood Rage. This increases the rage generated by your Blood Rage uh, from 2 to 5 extra rage uh, per point. So max points, you'll have an extra 5 rage generated from your blood rage. Uh, it's very nice because it leads up in the last stand and that extra rage is definitely much appreciated. Uh, especially when doing a pull, the difference between 10 and 15 rage is pretty significant. Um, for protection, you might not even be using charge to get into combat because you might not have the... Uh, you might be already in combat or you might not have the cooldown available when you need it, so just having the extra rage generated from blood rage is very nice. Uh, Next talent here, Evasive Maneuvers. This reduces the chance that you're critically struck by melee and ranged attacks by up to 3% at max. This is very nice because um, if you understand the math, uh, bosses essentially have a 5.6% chance to critically strike you. And in Wallcraft, due to uh, significantly increased damage values, being critically struck by a raid boss is almost certain death. So you want to have defense cap. You want to be uncritable by the bosses. Um... Typically, you would need 440 total defense, which is very steep for vanilla. Uh, basically, not really obtainable viably. With this talent, this reduces the amount of defense bonus that you need from 440 total to 370 total. You're shaving off 70 points required defense to become crit immune with this talent. Um, much more achievable. An extra 70 defense bonus versus 140. Uh, you can see right now... My defense bonus in Prebus that isn't even optimizing for defense bonus is 355. And with just another 15 defense bonus, which I can easily obtain from swapping out, let's say, my legs to Enchanted Thorium, something like that. Or using boots that give defense bonus, or rings that give defense bonus, or especially a trinket. A trinket would be the big one. If I were to pick up a, let's say, Lion Horn of Stormwind bit of a rare trinket, but definitely nice. You get the Lionhorn of Stormwind, which now has a 10 defense bonus, and if I were to have, let's say, a Maggle Ring. 
so with like four slots that aren't even optimizing for defense whatsoever we can achieve uncritable uh, this applies towards all tanks essentially have a talent like this feral druids are totally crit immune with their talents they get six percent uh, it's far deeper in the tree uh, shamans have a much higher bonus as well that they obtain from the talents so they don't really need to worry about defensive bonuses they just worry about avoidance for a warrior and paladin you get the three percent so you only need an additional 70 percent or 70 defense bonus to become uncritable that makes tanking a lot more easier and it's going to be very necessary as i said because bosses hit a lot harder uh a critical strike from a boss like gar or magmadar is going to be dealing like 5,000 damage and if you notice my health is 7.5k it's not something that you want to be taking um at the time so definitely becoming crit immune is very big in addition let's not forget on wallcraft all bosses including dungeon bosses starting from ragefire chasm all the way up through max ramus and karazhan and you know every piece of content every boss is skull level and they're calculated at three levels higher than you in addition they crushing blow on every attack that is unmitigated so each tank class has a toolkit to prevent them from being crushed which means if you aren't tank spec and using your toolkit properly or at least using your toolkit properly uh, between warrior shield block or shaman's rock biter uh proc from their storm strike or paladin's uh holy shield plus uh readout if you're not preventing crushing blows you're going to be getting a lot more damage coming in on every attack so pushing those crushing blows off the table with the 102.4 percent uh, mitigation or avoidance is very very big which brings uh blocking much more up to speed with the modern gameplay that we'd expect uh, anyways uh, moving on to the next talent iron will iron will reduces the chance to be stunned and charmed by up to 15 percent it's a very strong talent both for pve and pvp but primarily pvp if you're going to do a prop pvp you probably wouldn't take evasive maneuvers because being uncredible isn't really attainable but uh, Iron Will, obviously, 15% stun reduction and charm reduction chance is very big. Uh, it's definitely a talent that you'd want in PvP. Uh, moving on to the next one, Last Stand. This is your traditional Last Stand, hasn't changed. Uh, grants you 30% of your maximum hit points for 20 seconds. After the effect expires, the hit points are lost. Very strong cooldown. You pop this, and it can prevent you from just being splattered by a big enemy. Um, and it's especially useful, too, in PvP. You know, an enemy's about to kill you, you pop last stand, and suddenly you might have the upper hand. You might have more health for that time period. And it's definitely saved, saved me a few times while leveling in hardcore on my warrior. Uh, almost die, just pop last stand, and might be the difference between surviving or not. Uh, this is the next big one that I'd really like to talk about. Timed blocks. This is your traditional improved shield block. Uh, it's only a single point now. Uh, allows your shield block ability to block an additional attack and increases the duration by one second. If you block an attack within one second of using shield block, the rage cost is refunded and your next revenge is going to critically hit. This means that you have a very dynamic form of gameplay. And we're going to unlock my action bar here. A bar unlock. So we can see my attack bar and the enemy attack bar. And we're going to spawn in an enemy spawn in a hogger put shield block up on my bar put revenge uh, we're gonna give him some levels maybe equal to me 10,000 health and you can see when he's attacking here if I time my shield block ability right before he attacks I'll gain the time block proc which refunds the rage cost of shield block all right, ready? Yeah, we'll do it right now. There we go. So, refunds the rage cost of the shield block and guarantees my next revenge critically strikes. This offers some very, very dynamic gameplay because it allows me to time out my blocks and receive bonus benefit for using it at the proper time. And don't want to always just spam it on cooldown, especially if I'm fighting a single target. Now, if I'm fighting multiple targets, I'm going to be getting hit quite rapidly enough to guarantee that it happens. But when I use it properly against a single target, I can guarantee that I refund the rage cost and generate additional rage from shield specialization. So I'm getting 15 rage when I block instead. 
much bigger amount. Much bigger amount. And this is really the bread and butter of the uh, protection shield spec now. Um, the dual wielding days for tanks is definitely over. You need that uncrushable bonus that you get from blocking uh, in order to survive a boss encounter. Against raid trash it's a bit different or even dungeon trash uh, because they're not going to be crushing you every attack but against a boss it's definitely necessary to be using a shield. Um, the dual wielding days are pretty much over in that regard which I always thought was just a terrible meta of you know tanking a gigantic boss. See I didn't block at the right time. Uh, tanking a gigantic boss and using dual wield and just trying to pump damage instead of worrying about your survivability. Uh, I always thought it was just bad gameplay. But timed block offers much more reflexive combat, much more dynamic combat, because you're no longer just mashing your abilities uh, on cooldown uh, against the enemy. You know, you're using your ability at, at a very specific time. And being able to time out the blocks properly to get uh, such a huge benefit. We're essentially getting an extra 10 rage and guaranteeing our next revenge critically strikes. Um, that's very big. <laughs> time that one. Oh, if he misses, if I dodge or if I parry, I'm not going to get the refund, which is just how it is. But if I time out the block, you know, I gain a huge benefit. 10 extra rage and guaranteeing a critical strike. Not my next revenge. And it's pretty easy too to do because most enemies have a two second swing timer. So shield block only has a four second cooldown on wallcraft and provides two blocks with the talent which puts you on par with the other uh, classes for tanking ability in terms of blocking. But uh, it's pretty easy to use then because everything has like a pretty, well, not everything, but many things have a two second swing timer. So once you land the first one, you can just pretty much use it on cooldown at that point. Uh, it's very, very nice. It makes the gameplay very interactive. I've been leveling my hardcore with Prot, and it's definitely the most enjoyable thing because you single out an enemy, and then you just time your blocks, and you do a lot more damage and get a lot more rage. Um, and that rage can be spent elsewhere with either Cleaves, Heroic Strike, Thunderclap, Shield Slam, uh, which we'll talk about in a moment, the Shield Slam, of course. Let's move on, though, with the next talents. Punishment. Punishment now has up to 5 points, so you can guarantee a 100% chance to land a stun on any revenge strike. Uh, this co combines very, very nicely with the time blocks. You know, you time your block out, you refund the cost, and gain an extra 5 rage, so 15 rage on a block. And it guarantees the next revenge is going to critically strike. That block procs the revenge, and then you revenge, stun the enemy for 3 seconds, and deal a critical strike. It's a very nice combo, does a lot of damage, and huge threat. And um, additionally, of course, uh, Revenge deals a high amount of threat. Typically, that high amount just means a flat bonus to threat, but on Wallcraft, it actually deals your weapon damage plus 81 to 99 at max rank. So Revenge isn't just a static amount of damage, it's dealing bonus damage on top of normal weapon hit. So this means that using a slower main hand for Revenge damage is much more of a thing and uh, not only does it deal weapon damage of course it deals a high amount of threat but instead of a flat amount of threat it just deals twice as much threat as normal attacks so revenge uh, essentially if I hit a crit for a 600 revenge I'm dealing 1200 in terms of threat a much higher threat from revenge on wallcraft than in traditional vanilla much more damage as well obviously it's dealing like quite literally seven times as much damage. Uh, moving on to the next talent, Defiance. This increases your threat generated while in defensive stance by up to 15%. Uh, this is on top of the 10% normal bonus, so you're getting a 25% threat bonus while in defensive stance. Makes tanking a lot more, uh, much more easier. Obviously, this is a staple talent that you're going to want to take as a tank because threat is your main focus. Uh, threat and survival. Uh, moving on to the next one, Shield Breaker. This is your improved Sunder Armor. And at 3 points, it reduces the rage cost of Sunder Armor by 5 and reduces the global cooldown by 0.5 seconds. So you can reduce the global cooldown of your Sunder Armor down to 1 second. This makes it much better to use as a tank. Obviously, Sunder Armor generates a high amount of threat when used. And we're just going to be a scrub and we're going to click it on our bar. As you can see, the global cooldown is shorter. I can apply it faster, cost less rage. 
Um, very pleasurable to use. Generating threat on the pull. You charge in, you swap your stances, and then you start spamming Sunder. This is very nice to use. Uh, moving on to the next one, Sword Breaker. This reduces the cooldown of your disarm ability by up to 30 seconds. So from 1 minute to 30 seconds. And it reduces the rage cost by 15. So you essentially have a far lower rage cost on your disarm. Rage on disarm normally is a bit of an issue. But with this it's very nice. Ooh. A 30 second cooldown though. That's something definitely desirable. Uh, moving on to the next one. Provocation. Provocation... Reduces the cooldown of your taunt ability by one second and increases the range by five yards. Something I, something I just noticed too, the tooltip is not reflected correctly. It's supposed to reduce the rage cost on disarm for the sword breaker. It's supposed to reduce rage cost down to five. I'll have to fix that. It's only reducing it by a percentage instead of flat amount. Uh, next one though, provocation reduces the cooldown of your taunt by up to two seconds and increases the range of taunt by ten yards. So you can get a 15 yard range on your taunt. This is a very, very nice quality of life update. Uh, this allows you to taunt enemies at a further distance without needing to be directly next to them. Uh, enemy goes running off towards your caster, you're not going to be chasing after it, just stand where you are and taunt. Uh, next one of course is Unbreakable. Unbreakable reduces the cooldown of your shield wall by up to 20 minutes. So you can get shield wall down to a 10 minute cooldown. And it increases the duration of it by 10 seconds, so maximum of 20 seconds on use. This makes Shield Wall much more usable in raids instead of a long-term cooldown. It's now a 10-minute cooldown with this talent, and it lasts for 20 seconds. Um, for a boss in Rage, definitely going to want to be using it for basically most boss fights. Uh, you typically have about 10 minutes between bosses uh, in terms of trash for most encounters. So having Shield Wall up for majority of the boss fights definitely nice because you can Avoid the enrage mechanics, you can, you know, survive if your healers are getting knocked around or dying, something like that. Uh, on to the next one, Concussion Blow. Concussion Blow now additionally deals weapon damage and stuns the opponent for 5 seconds. And typically this just stuns the opponent, it doesn't do anything special. With Wallcraft mechanics, this will still deal the weapon damage even if the opponent is immune to stuns. So if you were to use this against a raid boss you would still be able to quickly deal some weapon damage. This is a very nice ability for use on the pole because you can guarantee a weapon damage swing against the enemy, which we'll use that right now to showcase. Generate some rage and pop the weapon damage, 138. So that's our weapon damage there. And it does the 5 second stun. 5 second stun is very nice. This is very, very valuable in a uh, PvP scenario especially. Prop PvP is much stronger, much more viable. It's very anti-melee, so anti-rogue, anti-other warrior, shaman, paladin, whatnot. Uh, protection PvP is personally one of my favorites on Wallcraft because it's very, very durable. Uh, deals pretty consistent damage, does very good damage in a PvE scenario, so if I'm fighting in a raid, uh, my protection warrior with a shield and a sword is going to be doing a lot of damage comparatively. Um, moving on to the next talent though, Gag Order. Gag Order gives your shield bash a 100% chance to silence the target for 3 seconds. And this reduces the rage cost by up to 100%. So this talent right here, 2 points, essentially allows me to incorporate shield bash in my rotation. Shield, bla shield bash does uh, damage equal to my block value plus 45. So if I were to reduce this enemy's armor down to zero, you can see exactly how much damage it's going to be dealing. So bonus 45, that means my block value right now, I just dealt a 92, that's like a 37 block value. That's pretty, pretty nice there. The uh, best part about it though, of course, it scales with block value, so something like Glyph of Deflection or any trinkets that will increase your block value, any armor that increases your block value. Uh, definitely ramps up the damage on this, and because it costs no rage, I can incorporate it into the traditional part of my rotation now with this talent. And, uh, of course, it procs stuff when you use it. It counts as a weapon swing. So, you, you would have noticed I proc Crusader with it. I could proc my, uh, you know, fire enchant, stuff like that. Uh, on to the next talents. 
Iron Grip. This reduces your chance, or this increases your chance to resist disarm effects by up to 100%. This gives you disarm immunity. Um, in Wallcraft, weapon chains only provide 50% chance to resist a disarm. So some classes are able to achieve uh, disarm immunity through either combinations of items. Basically, weapon chains, if you are able to dual wield weapons with two weapons, uh, having weapon chain on them, you'll be able to be immune to disarms. Uh, if you can't dual wield, let's say you're like a paladin, you can always use something like stronghold gauntlets that provide 50% as well. Uh, to combine that into with a weapon chain for 100% immunity or as a protection warrior uh, It's very easy to grab once you grab your defiance. This is a very nice talent because this Eliminates the need for even a weapon chain or anything like that. You can opt for a crusader or fiery blaze anything else really uh, Giving you disarm immunity uh, On to the next one one-handed weapon specialization. This increases the damage you deal with one-handed weapons by up to 10% this is very nice because typically it's only 5% and you get the 10%. It's definitely an increase in the damage bonus that you're going to be dealing. Uh, much higher damage in that regard. Uh, pretty cookie cutter talent though, uh, from what you'd expect. I might do a little bit more something with these, but they're strong enough already, so not really too concerned. Um, on to the last one for protection, Shield Slam. Shield Slam was always seen as being kind of weak in traditional vanilla on Wallcraft. It's been made much more viable, much stronger. Uh, shield slam so six second cooldown shield slam slams your target with your shield or buckler causing 288 to 352 damage this is modified by your shield block value and multiplied by your current rage pool it dispels one magic effect guaranteed on the target so traditionally in vanilla it's just a 50 percent chance in wallcraft it's just straight up 100 percent chance to dispel a magic effect and it causes a high amount of threat uh, high amount traditionally in vanilla would just be a bonus threat on wallcraft it deals double your damage and threat So if I would hit 500 it would deal 1,000 threat now the big the big portion of this is It no longer just scales from your shield block value It now scales from your shield block value multiplied by your current rage pool This means in conjunction with your timed blocks and your attacks and protection you gain a lot of rage and you can sit at a high amount of rage. You'll see I'm 100% rage. If I were being attacked by enemies, I would have even more because of the timed blocks generating a ton of rage. Uh, every time I pop shield block, I'd be basically getting a 10 rage gain from it and reducing the cost essentially, so 20 rage in total. Uh, makes it very easy to generate rage while using a shield. And then your shield slam, when used, because I have a high rage pool, deals a absurd amount of damage. You can see 728 non-crit at 100 rage. That's very strong. Now, of course, this is an unarmored target. I did modify its armor down to zero, but that's pretty much what you'd expect to do in a raid. 800 damage. And that's, of course, twice as much threat, so 1600 threat off a shield slam. This is your premier damage ability as protection, and it provides you a ton of threat. Uh, between this and Revenge, you will have no trouble holding threat on single target against all but the greatest pumpers. Uh, you throw in the Sunder Armors with the reduced global cooldown on them. You have your Shield Bash, which costs no rage, throwing out a little bit more uh, DPS and threat there for no cost besides the global cooldown. And then Shield Slam. I'll let my rage pool up, and you can see I'm at uh, 63 rage right now. I'll drop my rage down even a little bit further here with some abilities. Uh, 52 rage, you can see it's dealing 500 damage, so 500 at 50 rage, 800 at max rage. That's very nice level of scaling. And in terms of a max geared warrior, full tier 3, full best in slot armor with a crit and an rage and your impale. In fact, if you are to take the uh, impale talent or the enrage talent, your shield slams would be critting for like 3000 damage. Um, it's very, very powerful at that point. Now, that's a lot of factors to calculate in, you know, high block value with, like, Glyph and Deflection pop. Um, that's not world buffed either, though. That's just, that's just plain old 3,000 crit damage off of max gear. Uh, 100 rage, of course. Very, very strong, though. In terms of traditional vill, the difference is night and day. Uh, dealing weapon damage with all these abilities instead of just static low amounts of damage. And being able to do things like Shield Slam to instantly dispel with a guarantee and deal a high amount of damage, it's very nice. 
Uh, we're going to talk about some of the spell books here and give them a little bit of a gameplay. Uh, we're probably going to showcase the gameplay in another video. I kind of just wanted to take this time and go over the talents and the spells, but we're going to take a look at all the spells in depth, of course. Um, we're just going to start out with Arms. Arms has Charge unchanged aside from the talents that increase the range and the rage generated from it. Uh, Hamstring no longer deals any type of damage. It still can proc stuff, but it no longer deals damage. And uh, it's something that you would mostly use just to CC. The meta of spamming Hamstring to get something like a Nightfall to proc was bad, so that's been removed. It just does the 50% slow now. Uh, Heroic Strike unchanged, aside from the talents that reduce the rage cost even further, uh, down to 10 rage with max talents, still deals a high amount of threat, and the high amount of threat is the bonus threat still. It's not a doubling of the amount of threat, it's just the bonus threat that you're dealing with it. Uh, so you don't have to worry about pumping too much threat as a DPS. Uh, it's still very good for tanking and DPS, of course, uh, but you're going to be generating a lot more threat. Uh, Overpower, generally unchanged. It procs when your target dodges or parries. Rend, of course, is modified by your attack power, so it deals a lot more damage over time. Uh, if you have very high attack power, Rend's going to be ticking for a lot of damage. Uh, retaliation, of course, generally the same 30-minute cooldown, 15-second duration, maximum 30 attacks reflected uh, with instant weapon attacks. Slam, of course, as I stated earlier, is usable while moving. It doesn't get interrupted on moving, and it doesn't reset your swing timer, so it's much better. It's your mainstay. Uh, for two-handed weapon DPSing. Sweeping Strikes, of course, is now baseline ability. Doesn't require a talent. Uh, just pop Sweeping Strikes. It still is only usable in Battle Stance and Berserker Stance, but if I were to pop over into Battle or Berserker and use it, I would uh, be able to switch back back into a Defensive Stance. So we'll get that popped and then switch back over into Defensive Stance. Obviously, it doesn't fade. Uh, Thunderclap, usable in Defensive Stance. Uh, with the talents, it only costs 10 rage, and it has no target cap. As you can see, I just hit 5 targets, it has no target cap, and as well, it deals nature damage instead of physical, so it cuts right through armor. Much, much better on wallcraft. This is your main focus piece for AoE threat. Instead of spamming shouts repeatedly, you'll now pretty much be using Thunderclap on cooldown. It's got a 4 second cooldown, so a very short cooldown. Uh, moving over into Fury, Battle Shout, um... As with all auras in Wallcraft, now affects all allies instead of just party or raid members. So if I were to use Battle Shout, I would affect all nearby allies. Um, this makes it much nicer for spreading out. Um, instead of having to spread warriors into different groups to ensure everybody's getting a Battle Shout, you just have one warrior specialize in Supreme Shouts for that big bonus, and then they're the main person doing the shouts for both Demo and Battle Shout. Um, all auras like this uh, that traditionally only affected party or raid members, uh, most of them I should say, are now all friendly nearby units instead, so you don't really have to worry about being in a party or in a raid group party. Uh, Berserker Rage, of course, same general principle, 30 second cooldown, makes you immune to fear and incapacitating effects, and you generate extra rage when taking damage, only usable in Berserker Stance. Uh, challenging Shouts, 10 minute cooldown, AoE Taunt, uh, with the booming voice talent, costs no rage, otherwise costs 5 rage. Uh, cleave, same deal as always, pretty much. 20 rage, uh, attacks one nearby extra target on your next weapon swing for extra 50 damage. With the talent, of course, you can hit uh, two additional targets, so three in total. It makes it very, very nice for that cleave damage. Uh, demoralizing Shout, unchanged. Uh, all enemies within 10 yards have their attack power reduced by 146. With talents, it goes back up to like 225, something like that. Uh, execute, generally the same. Uh, big, big damage, and each extra point of rage is converted into additional damage, only usable on enemies under 20% health, usable in both battle and berserker stance. Uh, intercept, as I spoke about earlier, uh, no longer stuns and costs 100% rage on use, but with talents, it has no cooldown. And it gives you increased movement speed bonus for 3 seconds, 50% movement speed bonus for 3 seconds after using it. And as well, it removes any roots or slows. This gives warriors an insane amount of mobility, especially in PvP. Uh, something that everybody's too familiar with is you charge in on a frost mage and they blink away and then you intercept on the frost mage and then they frost over you and then you're dead because you 
basically can't do anything else after that. You're just stuck standing there like a jackass. Well, in Wallcraft, you intercept and they ice Nova you, and then you intercept again and you just break the Nova and all the slows. Um, you definitely can be dead zoned because it has an 8 to 25 yard range. So if they stand between 5 and 8 yards, you cannot hit them and you can't intercept. So you can get dead zoned by a skilled player, but this gives you far more mobility. And even if they're dead zoning you, if you can find a different target, just intercept to a different target to break out the roots and the slows, and then run right back over to them with the bonus, uh, bonus movement speed. This was especially though intended for PvE mobility, so you can charge and intercept to the targets that uh, you're needed at. Especially, you know, if everything's not grouped up, you just intercept over to it, breaks out any roots, any slows, gives you a lot more mobility in both PvE and PvP. Uh, intimidating Shout generally unchanged. The one big thing to note, if you'll notice the tooltip, it doesn't break from bleed effects, which is huge because a big problem with Warrior is typically you would go for the uh, Deep Wounds talent and then if you hit somebody and you crit them and then suddenly you need to Intimidating Shout to CC them, you really couldn't because it would just break upon the bleed tick. On Wallcraft, bleeds do not break Intimidating Shout. Um, this gives you a lot more reliable usage of it and you don't have to worry too much about the deep wounds uh, negatively impacting you. Uh, this is a big one, Mocking Blow. Mocking Blow is an attack that causes bonus 93 damage and a large amount of threat. Uh, the large amount essentially being double your damage in threat, so if I hit 500 it would cause 1000 threat. Uh, Mocking Blow is just an instant attack for 10 rage on a 5 second cooldown, very similar to Overpower and Revenge now, but for Fury. And Mocking Blow can only be used against targets who are not targeting me. So if an enemy is targeting me, I can't use Mocking Blow on them. But if they're not targeting me, I can use Mocking Blow. Mocking Blow is extremely strong, but you have to note that Mocking Blow will ramp your threat up very, very quickly. Uh, it's essentially designed to be a counterpart to Revenge and Overpower, as I said. They all have a 5 second cooldown. Revenge, Overpower, and Mocking Blow are all on a category cooldown, so if you use Overpower, you couldn't use Mocking Blow for 5 seconds. Uh, they all have low rage cost, Mocking Blow having the highest rage cost of 10, whereas Overpower and um, Revenge only have a rage cost of 5. But Mocking Blow is consistently usable as long as the enemy is not targeting you. But because it cause, causes double threat, you will hit that threat cap before pulling aggro much quicker when using Mocking Blow. So, overall, it increases the amount of damage that you're outputting, but it might decrease your DPS in total if you're pulling aggro, and if threat cap is an issue. So if your tank is generating a ton of threat, your Mocking Blow is going to give you a lot more DPS, but if your tank is hitting a ceiling on threat and you're, you're approaching that point, it's definitely wise not to use Mocking Blow because you're lowering the potential amount of damage that you can deal before pulling the threat. And if the enemy is very strong, like a raid boss, you might die from a single hit. Um, you definitely have to calculate the odds and uh, all the factors involved there. Uh, Pummel now, of course, does the interrupt, but it also deals damage equal to your strength bonus plus 50. Pummel's very, very strong. It's essentially now part of your DPS rotation as Fury. You pop the Pummel, and you see I'm dealing uh, basically the same amount of damage that I would deal with a weapon swing. That's because my strength is 292. Obviously, the enemy has armor, so it's being reduced by a bit. But I pop Pummel, and my Crusader proc gives me 100 strength. So you see the increase in damage there. You know, pretty significant. It went from 161 to 228. Uh, Pummel is a very, very strong part of your DPS rotation now as a Fury Warrior. You can use Pummel um, essentially on cooldown. only costs 10 Rage, and it deals the amount of strength that you have as damage. Now, strength is much harder to scale up than, say, attack power, so it deals a pretty fair amount of damage, but it's not going to be anything crazy. You definitely can get it pumped up, though, with some procs, like a Diamond Flask or Double Crusader proc, especially something like an Untamed Blade with a Crusader proc, 400 bonus strength. That's, uh, that's pretty significant. You'll see, you know, pummels in the 500s at that point then. But very low rage cost, very low cooldown, nice little supplement for DPS. And uh, doesn't really... Uh, the, the big thing to note is it's not on global cooldown. So that makes it a much bigger staple of your DPS rotation because it's not on the global cooldown. It does share a cooldown with Shield Bash. Uh, Shield Bash will be removed from global cooldown to be much like Pummel and Kick. Basically any of the 
non-global cooldown interrupt abilities. Kick for rogues also deals damage equal to the rogue's agility. Uh, I'm sorry, strength as well. Uh, might change that to agility. Just have to play test a little bit more though. Uh, regardless, though, we're gonna continue. Recklessness relatively unchanged. Uh, increases all the damage that you take by 20%. Makes you immune to fear and causes all of your attacks to critically strike for 15 seconds with 30 minute cooldown. Very long cooldown ability, but of course your Clash of Steel. Every successful weapon attack reduces the cooldown current cooldown by one second. So. With rapid attacks on an enemy, you can reduce the cooldown pretty significantly. In playtesting, I would say it's like with two fast weapons and uh, almost no misses, I could basically reduce the cooldown by 15 minutes on Recklessness. Um, just being able to attack a single enemy for 15 minutes, I'll have reset the cooldown. Um, not totally realistic, but you'll definitely see a lot of cooldown reduction on that by just rapidly attacking the enemy. Uh, Whirlwind Unchanged, very good ability to begin with. Attacks four enemies for your main hand weapon damage. Much more powerful with a two-hander, but of course still very good for a one-handed build or a dual wield build. Uh, only usable in Berserker Stance and just causes weapon damage to those four enemies. Uh, moving on to Protection, Blood Rage relatively unchanged. Um, they're considered in combat, generates the rage. Uh, concussion Blow, of course, deals weapon damage and stuns the opponent, whereas previously it only stunned the opponent, so dealing that bonus weapon damage makes it a much stronger ability, and it still deals the weapon damage even if the enemy is immune to stun. So, very strong ability to use, and you get it as part of your staple kit when going for the Shield Slam, which you definitely want, because it's a very, very strong ability now. Uh, disarm, of course, like I said, I do have to uh, fix the tooltip on that, but the disarm uh, can be reduced to 30 second cooldown with the talents. It does the same thing though, 10 second disarm. Now, one thing to note in Wallcraft is that traditionally in vanilla, disarm's only affected melee ability usage and basic melee attacks, whereas on Wallcraft, disarms affect uh, the enemy's ability to use ranged abilities. So, like an aim shot, you wouldn't be able to use aim shot while disarmed. As well, it reduce, uh, removes your ability to use shield-based abilities. So if I were to disarm, I wouldn't be able to use shield block, shield slam. Uh, Paladins couldn't use holy shield. You can still block, but you can't use those abilities. Um, that makes disarm very, very powerful and a very negative uh, debuff to have, especially if you're tanking and you get disarmed and you can no longer use your shield block for that bonus uh, block chance. You might start eating crushing blows, which is very dangerous. Um, having disarm immunity is definitely something that you'd want to consider as a tank. Uh, of course, last stand unchanged, very good ability to begin with. Uh, revenge deals weapon damage, that's very strong, makes revenge scale a lot higher. Um, it also deals bonus damage as well. If you notice, the bonus damage is actually what it used to deal previously in terms of damage. It used to only deal 81 to 99 damage. Uh, now it deals the weapon damage on top of that, make, makes it much better. As well, the threat is no longer static. It's now just double the amount of damage that it dealt. Uh, shield Bash, like I said, that will be removed from the global cooldown to be in line with the other abilities. And deals damage equal to your block value plus 45. So, and, and interrupts, of course, and prevents the spells being cast for 6 seconds. Very strong ability. Um, with the talents, has no rage cost, so it just becomes a staple of your DPS utility. And, of course, it's usable in battle stance and defensive stance. It makes it very strong. Uh, shield block. It's relatively the same, but the cooldown is slightly reduced. And the duration, of course, is the same. So it's now only a 4-second cooldown instead of 5. This makes it fall in line with the other tank classes' abilities. Um, in terms of the amount of attacks that you can block over an 8-second period. Uh, traditionally, Paladin's Holy Shield had 8-second cooldown with a... Uh, four attacks blocked, whereas a warrior can only get two attacks blocked every five seconds, so they were categorically worse aside from the amount blocked. Um, so now this pushes it in line with the other abilities as well. Shield Slam we did talk about, of course, with the scaling based on your current rage pool. Causes it to deal a lot more damage, significantly more damage. Uh, shield Wall, aside from the talents that reduce its cooldown and increase its duration, is unchanged. Very good ability to begin with. Uh, Sunder Armor still has the same amount of armor reduced, but of course with the talents has lower global cooldown, makes it much easier to apply Sunder Armor stacks. 
and taunt, of course, unchanged aside from the talents, which reduce the cooldown and increase the range, giving you an extra 10 yard bonus on taunt. Uh, that about wraps it up for the Warriors' abilities. Uh, we'll do another video showcasing some of their gameplay later, and we'll talk about some of the nuances in terms of their gameplay with the things like uh, Barbarian Talents, Blade Storm, um, Clash of Steel, the improved cleave uh, through Carnage, and Prot gameplay in particular with the timed blocks and the amount of rage generation being done. Um, we could pop over into BRD real quick and take a look-see. Just kind of see the uh, expected rage generation. We're in pre bis gear right now, and we're just going to go ahead and pop over onto these enemies. Uh, you'll see my rage just pumping up through proper timing with time blocks. Now, because I'm tanking two enemies, I don't really have to focus too much on the timing of it all. Simply because I'm getting hit enough to generate that type of rage. Revenge crit 500, very nice. You know, something that you wouldn't see typically in vanilla. It's that type of damage. This gives much more viability, though, to the uh, sword and shield warrior. Traditionally in vanilla, you know, you'd use the dual wield while tanking because it was more so a threat issue and a damage increase issue. The shield didn't really do anything besides provide armor and obviously enable you to block, which not being crushed was nice, but wasn't really necessary in vanilla. In Wallcraft, it's much more... Requirement. Let me take a look over here at the boss there. Is my time blocking now. Yeah, my rage is just pooling up. If I was spamming out heroic strike, I could dump my rage, but being able to pool up high rage to use that higher damage on the shield slam is very beneficial. I can weave the uh, shield bash for some nice damage onto my rotation. Time block that. Big rage generation. Very nice. Now let's pull up some rage here. Yeah, look at that. That's some nice damage there. Even with no rage, you know, the shield slam is still dealing pretty significant damage. But higher rage is definitely uh, much better. Very nice. Yeah, we'll go to a boss here. We'll uh, go to Flame Lash. You can see he doesn't deal a ton of damage in terms of physical. He deals some nasty fire damage. A big burst of 2,000 fire damage there is pretty scary. I'll kill him off real quick. Let's see, do we have the rare? Uh, what would what would be a good boss? We'll go Magnus. Let's see Magnus. Yeah, Magnus is gonna slap. As you can see, he's hitting me for 500s. I'm blocking. I'm actually able to reduce a bit of that. The flame jets in this room deal significantly more damage, so I gotta be very very careful with where I'm pulling the boss where I'm tanking him. I'll pull him all the way to the back wall where I'm free from that. But yeah, these flame jets are dealing significantly higher damage here. fire damage from this guy. Yeah, it's a very nice gameplay from Protection Warrior. Yeah, inventory is full. And I could swap over to the other ones, but I'd rather do a full-fledged video of some of the gameplay in terms of uh, actual dungeon group and not just messing around with the uh, GM stuff, so... We put out a video for all three specs here. We're going to talk about the arms, DPS, and PVE, 
particularly uh, Fury DPS. Of course, everybody wants to see that. And Protection's performance as the tank. Uh, thank you for tuning in. I know this is a long video, but glad to have a deep dive on some of the philosophies and some of the designs. Mostly just going over the talents here, but... Um, as I said, you know, a big thing about Warrior, they're a very strong class to begin with, but they did have some gaping holes in their gameplay, particularly in the usage of shields and the viability of two-handed weapons in PvE scenarios. Um, those have been addressed in Wallcraft, so the gameplay is much more enjoyable. If you were to try out the two-handed arms Warrior in PvE, you would be very, very impressed. Um, you can find some videos on my channel and from other people's channels uh, showcasing it. And the protection talents with the shield slam and the revenge and the shield block makes the gameplay much more enjoyable when using a sword and shield as a tank. Not only enjoyable but very necessary now just simply due to mob damage values. We can go to molten core even and we're in pre best here so I'm just going to tell you directly in there. And take a look at this real quick. I'm just going to single tank it see how much dam damage these mobs are actually doing. Mm, three lucky dodges in a row. Four dodges. Nice. Ow. Yeah, 1700 damage there. If I were being crit, you know, that's half my health if I were to be crit. Just against one of these mobs. It'd be pretty dangerous. One thing you'll notice is that health values are pretty significantly increased in Wallcraft. That's because you gain more HP per point of stamina. That pads out the differences between DPS and tanks, whereas the DPS would only have about 4.5k health, the tank will have you know, 7.5k. Um, this prevents DPS from essentially being the same as tanks, instead of just uh, having a little bit more avoidance. Tanks now have a lot more survivability. The big thing to note though is that healing values haven't particularly changed, so healers are going to be dealing relatively the same amount of healing as they would normally, but mob damage is pretty tuned up so healers mana is now the biggest constraint instead of just raw dps or anything else so you definitely want to as a tank focus on mitigation and focus on survivability and threat compared to previously where it was just mostly dealing damage and dealing threat uh, because healers mana healer healers running out of mana is going to be your biggest difficulty in these encounters they last a lot longer and the damage is much higher so healers need to be on point but yeah, you can see it's dealing, you know, between 1600 to 1800 damage on each unmitigated attack. I have 7000 armor in total. So a pretty significant increase in terms of damage that you'd see from them. But it's definitely something that's survivable. Let's uh, in fact even go over to a boss here. We'll go to... I'll go to Lucifron. Just pull off all the trash here. Oh, I didn't want to kill the boss. That's fine though. Fight Magmanar instead. Follow dogs. Just take a look at the damage that the boss is going to be doing, and I'm just going to sit here. I'm not even going to block. Let's take a look here. Let's we'll see the numbers. 2,400. That would be a crushing blow if it wasn't unmitigated. 3,000 crushing. So every every attack that I'm not mitigating, it's dealing between 2.7 to 3k. So yeah, 2,700, 2,600, 3,000, 2,400. Every attack that is not blocked, dodged, or parried, or miss will guaranteed be a crushing. So having block cap, which means 102.4% avoidance, is a very, very big deal on wallcraft. That means I want to be using my shield block. I want to be dodging, I want to be avoiding attacks, I want to make sure that I'm not dying to anything. Because that's going to drain the healer's mana, try and keep me alive if I'm playing like a scrub. taking significantly less damage, 1600 instead of 2.7k on blocking the attack. Yeah, when he frenzies, that's scary. Definitely have to be on point with those tracks because they're going to burn through your, your blocks on your shield there. 
Uh, Druid obviously can't block because they don't have a shield, but they have increased armor to essentially equalize the amount of crushing blow damage. They will take more damage than Warrior Paladin or Shaman, but overall they have higher armor, higher health, so they have a little bit more padding on them as a Druid. We'll obviously talk about Druids more though in their own video. So, thank you for tuning in. I know this is a long video, but a lot of people have been asking for the Warrior Deep Dive. Um, we're going to showcase the specs, like I said, next week. We'll do the three different specs in a PvE scenario. Probably edit something nice together. Instead of just doing a ramble video. But just wanted to get the talents and the abilities showcased for you to review and take a look at. Uh, that's all for today. Thank you for tuning in. My name is Wall, and until next time, enjoy.